This is Terry from Money Matters for Everybody. Hope you're all well. So today I wanted to talk about a recent Substack publication or article that I published on Substack about the rich getting richer. This actually came out of a conversation I had with my eldest son, TJ, as we were taking a walk around the block recently and noticed that um, I really know that I want to say that correctly. Um, taking a walk with TJ around the block and we were talking about, we had noticed somebody in the neighborhood got a new car and I always have a fun, sometimes useless fact <laughs> to share. And I said, oh, did you hear, I recently heard that the average car payment in America is now $700 a month. And having a conversation around, that's a lot of money. That's $8,400 a year. A couple of years ago, when we were getting out of debt, it was about 500 a month, around 500 a month. And I ran some calculations at that point through the um, investment calculator and realized that's 80, you know, that's a lot of money that adds up to a couple million over a working lifetime. Well, you can imagine $700 a month works up even faster um, over a, actually over a working lifetime, it's about $4.4 million. So over 40 years invested at an average rate of return of about 10 to 12%. I think I said 10% went in on the low number. It's crazy. So it kind of had me thinking about whether the rich get richer and the poor get poorer is really true. Uh, or maybe the rich get richer, the working class get poorer. But yes, yeah, sure, surely if they're spending $700 a month on car payments, surely they're not getting richer. Um, so, and it kind of reminded me that this is a decision that we make, right? I, at some point as well, I had car payments, I had student loan payments, I had credit card debt, and I believed that this was all normal. And I believed this was just the way that life was, that we grow up, we go to college, we take out student loans, we take out debt, and this is normal. This is part of the American dream. It wasn't until that was challenged, even just a few years ago, that I started thinking differently. Uh, I guess I've been challenging things ever since. So I wanted to tell you that it's not, it doesn't have to be normal, uh, actually, and trying to raise our children that this isn't normal, that you don't have to do this, that you can work hard, save money and pay for things in cash. And there's so many benefits to doing so, so many benefits to not having debt, so many benefits to not owing a lender that are just far reaching in your life. And the term financial peace is a complete understatement, um, and but perfect statement to indicate how, just how freeing that is when you don't have a life of payments. So it was kind of a point where we were talking about, I said, well, maybe people have choices. We have choices to make. Yeah, you need a car. You totally need a car. I live in the suburbs. You can't get anywhere without a car. I mean, you could walk, you could bike, but it would take you longer. You need a car, but you don't need a $700 a month car. That's just craziness to me. And not judging if you have a $700 a month car, not judging at all, but I don't, I wonder if you realize what it's costing you, if you have a $700 a month car payment over the long term. And why do you have a $700 car? Is it because you want people to like look at you or you want to show <laughs> the world? Hey, look at me, I'm successful. I have this $700 a month car. Um, I have a car that's 10 years old and I, I was thinking about trading it in, trading it up. I drive a Prius and it's 10 years old. I love it. It's like a little sports car, but it doesn't have much power. So maybe not. <laughs> it's still is fun to drive. Occasionally I catch my husband wanting to just drive the car. And I think that there's a lot of value in driving a used car, a small car, you can kind of get in and out of situations pretty, pretty easily. But I was thinking about trading it in for like a RAV4, um, just something a little bit bigger, probably still a hybrid. And, uh, but we'd have to pay cash for it. That's one of our commitments moving forward. We're not taking out any more debt. We'll pay, we'll pay cash for it. And so when you're paying cash for something, you really think twice 
or three times, or at this point, like 300 times in my case about whether you really need it. I don't need a new car. My 10 year old car has like 45,000 miles on it. It'll probably last me. The thing will probably rust out before I need a new car. Um, and I love Toyotas because they're just, they don't require a lot of maintenance. I don't think I've put a penny out on that car outside of maybe new tires, maybe new brakes, just the regular maintenance. Um, so I don't need a new car, but of course, after a decade, you think, yeah, what I kind of switch it up. And then I kind of pray for like peace to just live with it for the next five to 10 years, because maybe if I invested that money instead in 10, 15, 20 years, I could buy whatever car I wanted. Um, so anyhow, so I think it's just kind of a matter of if you're raised with the principles of money and I'm grateful that we're raising our children that way, you just can see things differently. Having getting having gotten out of debt ourselves, we've learned a lot about money and money behaviors um, that will never will never go back to the way that we used to be uh, because of that. And I think it points to wealth begets wealth, right? So when you decide I'm not going to have payments, um, I'm not going to have car payments, I'm not going to have loan payments, I'm going to instead save that money. I'm, I'm going to instead invest that money. I'm in the process of evaluating high yield savings accounts because um, our emergency fund, your emergency fund should always be liquid, but you can put it in a high yield savings account and you should put it in a high yield savings account. Unfortunately, my bank doesn't offer that option. So I have to go um, external to my bank. And that is requires time, energy, resources, um, research to make a good choice to understand what I'm getting into. So that's one of my goals for this week is to evaluate high yield savings accounts that would be best for our family. And there's plenty of YouTube videos out there. Um, so I just prefer to keep my money local and not in a big bank. And so trying to find that takes a little bit more time and research. So, so I wanted to kind of, I did want to point out, so yeah, the rich probably do have an advantage, but we should be concerned about our own journey and making sure that our cards are in order, that we're out of debt, that we have our emergency fund established. And once you do, and your behaviors change, because your behaviors, I found my behaviors changed after we got out of debt. I don't look at money the same, um, and I probably never will. And I'm grateful for that because there is a different way. And when you view money differently, that's the path to richness. And the term rich, I'm never going to be like an ultra rich, mega, mega millionaire, but that's not the point. The richness to me is living in peace, knowing that I don't owe anybody anything, knowing that if I got laid off tomorrow, that I could use that painful moment and turn it into something that's a blessing. Uh, I think that the, that's the point. That is the point. So rich to me doesn't mean in my world. And I think you have to define what rich means for you. Rich to me is finding financial peace, being in a position where I don't owe anybody anything, being in a position where I can provide for my family and that I can pivot no matter what's happening in the world. And I believe that when you get to that place, you open up so many doors for opportunity and blessings to pour in. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to rely on that and I'm going to remain confident in that. So anyhow, I just wanted to pop in and kind of talk about that article. And hopefully if you had a chance to check it out, it's over at money matters for everybody.substack.com. And the article is actually at the top. Um, it's called the rich get richer. So have at it. I'd love to hear comments from you and some thoughts as to what you feel, if you feel that, um, and where you're at in your journey of finding financial peace. So take care. Have a good day.